Hello and welcome to another episode of Addicted to Business. Today I'm joined by my co-host Stokely Howard. Hello. And most importantly our wonderful guest. This guest today is incredibly uh, important to me over COVID. We've created a real friendship and I'm delighted to have her on the show today. So without further ado, please meet the wonderful Eloise Finch. Hi everybody, nice to see you here. So Eloise, let's dive straight in. We've got roughly 35 to 40 minutes. It's all about giving value to the audience. We know how great you are with Amazon. They might not. Let's talk about you, your journey, uh, and kind of what you can share on Amazon. So let's start with you and your journey. Uh, I, having known you personally, I know that it's been quite a career. Perhaps you can share some of those highlights with the audience today. Sure. So at the moment, I'm CEO of Sell Beyond, but I have had what you call a portfolio career, which is another way of saying trial and error in enormous amounts. So I started off in data analytics. I did a PhD at the University of Michigan in the States. I then went into financial consulting and worked for a R&D tax credit agency for a number of years, specializing in startups. And then I went, ended up as CMO for a nanotechnology startup in East Anglia before deciding that what I wanted to do all along was found my own business, which I've been running for about two and a half years. Very good. So I'm interested to hear about Amazon as a whole. I personally don't think there's ever been a bigger opportunity to get on Amazon. How are you finding it with, with the guys at Sell Beyond? I, I guess things are just crazy, right? Well, I mean, Amazon, biggest company in the world. We love it. You hate it. A lot of people love Amazon Prime. And so there are lots of opportunities at the moment um, with lockdown. There have been big gains for companies selling in food and drink, which might have had less um, sales on in certain channels in shops or in hospitality and are doing well in food and drink, outdoor, home and garden, um, housewares, pampering, that stuff doing really well. Certain types of action sports, water sports, yachting uh, have suffered while lockdown was going on, but are probably going to pick up this summer. So um, there are a lot of ways you can sell on Amazon. There are business categories. You can sell lab equipment on Amazon. Um, there's opportunities for most types of business selling physical products. So Heloise, what I'm interested in, in knowing about, specifically about Amazon is what are the common pitfalls or the common traps that people fall into when, when listing out their first product on Amazon or, or whatever it is? What, what are the common mistakes that people make? I think the mistake, unfortunately, people make is the thinking it's going to be easy and seamless yeah. because unfortunately Amazon is the biggest company in the world, but it's really hard to use. Mm. Um, if you're used to setting up stuff on Shopify on your own website, you've got a lot of control. If you're used to doing things with Facebook and Google, they make your life easy. The trap with Amazon is they make your life hard. You often have bots that reply to you rather than individuals. You have to put a lot of, let's say, support ticket requests through the seller platform to get anything done. And sometimes you'll have to put them in multiple times to get them done. So um, I have one client that says in their company, they have to remind themselves every day that Amazon isn't the enemy. So the opportunities are endless, the shelf space is enormous and everybody shops there, but it's user friendliness is definitely pretty low um, on the scale. So you've just got to be prepared, grit your teeth and, and be on top of it. Mm, there's, there's no way to, to overcome that, I guess. Well, I think that everything is Googleable and there are certain experts. You can find an expert if the seller account has been defended. You can certainly find people to set up listings for you. None of it's rocket science, but they, for example, if you own a brand and you're selling a brand that's been on Amazon, you have to set yourself up on brand registry. You have to have a trademark application that may take a few weeks to come through um, on your Amazon account. It will all happen eventually, but it's not as user friendly as Google or Facebook or WordPress, and just be prepared for that. That's really interesting, actually, because uh, a lot of times when I talk to companies or I talk to marketing agencies, uh, their first take is probably you don't really want to sell on Amazon because you don't own everything. You have to put it through somebody else's platform. You're you're putting your trust in someone else. You're better off to stick with what you get, what you what you know, which is probably your e-commerce site. And I hear a lot of people saying that. So that's a major barrier. 
um, for a lot of companies. And I would say, well, it depends what you want to sell. Like there are profitable opportunities on Amazon like anywhere else and everyone loves Prime. In terms of reporting, again, it's not user friendly. Um, you have to look for it. But I'm sure Nathan and Sophie, you know, people that um, everyone knows about analytics. How many people you know that really dig, and dig in there and swim around on a daily basis, right? That's the same with um, with Amazon. You've got to get in there. But there's lots of software. You can buy software that will help you with the reporting, um, even if it's not user-friendly on Amazon. A lot of software companies have set up great user interfaces for you know a couple of hundred dollars a year or whatever, uh, and you can get access to that in a simplified form. We always say this about analytics, right? You can answer any question, but the actual challenge is being able to answer the questions within the platform. It, it tells you everything you want to know, but sometimes you have to go through so many hoops and barriers to be able to ask a question. You just think, oh, you know what? It's not even that important. And I know from previous uh, webinars we've done together, some of the, the kind of content we've been discussing is around tracking and measuring. And, and like I say, I'm, I'm, good. I'm glad to hear actually that actually the Amazon platform, it, the, the analytics is fine. And actually it's a bit of a red herring where people are saying that, Maybe I would say so. I was, and especially if you're just about to get up, get set up on Amazon, that's probably not your main concern. What you want to make sure is um, a bunch of other stuff. The analytics will come in a month or two down the line. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm a complete novice when it comes to Amazon, Amazon marketing. So you might have to educate me a little bit here. Hello, <laughs> um, does it work for uh, any particular sector? Is it better for one sector than it is for another, or? or I mean, would you say it's, it's fair to say that it's seg, uh, sector agnostic in a way? I would put that question back to you, Stokely. If I was going to do video marketing, would that work for any sector? Or does it depend what the product is? Do we have to have a USP to get really good video marketing or we can video market anything? I'm interested in your response. <laughs> put me on the spot here. That's that not coming, a did you, mate? <laughs> well, no, no, absolutely. And, and we say this to our clients as well, you know, a particular video and, and, and particular types and then forms of a video works definitely for each different sector. So I'm guessing by what you're saying is that it's the same with Amazon. <laughs> you're throwing it back at me. <laughs> so <laughs> so with, with Amazon, okay, what we're talking about here is 3D products. You can sell books on Amazon. Mm. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's a different area of expertise. You can, mm. you can sell music through Amazon. And I don't know anything about that. If you're selling 3D products, you want to make sure you have a USP. If you're going to sell iPhone chargers, that market is pretty crowded. So um, you might have a problem. So the, the key things I'd say is you want to have a USP. It's easier if you own the brand. You either set up a brand, um, you import stuff and kind of rebrand it um, as your own, or you create stuff here. You, and you want to have a USP. That's what the fundamentals of marketing are, right? Some, some things will be better oh. for different, but if you've got nothing to say, then whatever you say, will be completely meaningless. So it's harder in electronics, that's very competitive, but there are niches. If you find the right niche and you've got an awesome product, then there's no reason why you can't market on Amazon because the advantage mm. of that platform is it's very templated. You don't have to reinvent the wheel in terms of creativity, but mm. you have to follow the way that things work on Amazon. So there are lots of advantages for somebody like me that has no visual language and pretty much hates creative. It's great because a lot of the things, a lot of the choices are made for you on Amazon. You don't have to worry about where the buttons are or what colors. It's a big yellow buy now button, job done. Yeah, so in, in, in this time of our lives during COVID, what are the sectors that are thriving at the moment on Amazon then? I think that um, online as a whole is up. Mm. The um, I think the only sectors that have been seeing a downturn are the ones where people cannot pursue um, that during lockdown. So I have um, a client that sells a lot of water sports, yachting, um, triathlon kind of gear. They have been a good time, but just last weekend, because we're in May here, the Royal Yachting Association said you can go back out on the water. That's fine. It complies with government guidelines. I'm sure they'll be seeing an uptick. I don't think there's, um, there's anything that now a couple of months in is is not is not possible to pick up but i would say that for me um food and drink has been something where i've had a lot of interest from companies that had an amazon account were really involved much more in wholesale for example and suddenly their amazon has gone like that and now they mm. want to talk mm. so Louise, one thing i would really like to learn today and, and be able to share with the audience is around the the algorithm behind amazon we've had a brilliant session with mark williams cook on this series where we've talked around the Google algorithm and the constant changes. So a two part question, this one, firstly, can you share any light? Is there an algorithm that kind of powers Amazon? And if so, can you share any light on, on kind of how it works and, and what it looks for? And then the second part, if that algorithm is changing as frequently as Google, where on earth do you learn all the stuff and keep up to date to make sure that you're on top of the game when you are listing on Amazon? 
Sure. So in terms of Amazon, the algorithm is called A9, I believe. And I'm sure you Google that, you get a lot of information about it. What mm. Amazon looks for is whether, so remember that Amazon is a massive search engine. It's a search with buying intent engine. So people go to Amazon to buy, they'll do a bit of research, but they're not really researching in the same way on Amazon. So things do work differently. Amazon wants to know that when somebody typed in garlic press or leather trainers or whatever it is, they garlic came press. to your page, garlic press. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a classic in Amazon consulting because it was a niche area where a lot of people imported amazing one, weird and wonderful garlic presses thinking they were going to make a killing in the kitchen. If you search for garlic presses, there are probably about 100,000 different ones around. <laughs> There's so, one uh, where you can press garlic, surely. Though. <laughs> <laughs> How many colours can you sell a garlic press in and in what materials? So you think put your entrepreneurial hat on, right? Right, so back into that. The, the A9 is the algorithm. Uh, it, it works slightly different to the Google algorithm, but at the same time, it does have ranking factors, if you like, to be yeah. able to list your product. That's right. So the ranking factors are, do people search, click on your product, and then buy it? That's a key one. Um, do people, the words that people search for, if they lead them to your page, do they buy it? Um, do people leave, leave reviews? Do you, um, those, those kind of, ranking factors to do with marketing. There are ranking factors. Do you send your products out on time? Do you have customer complaints? So all of those are kind of more seller slash inventory customer satisfaction. That counts on it as well. And also the big difference for Amazon in relation to Google is that Amazon advertising actually counts for organic ranking. If you're running ads, they're seen as relevant. Um, your ads are gonna place higher and they will contribute to your organic ranking factor. So that's something if you're uh, if you're just running Amazon ads and you don't have, um, you're not fit, you may not realize, you may not realize that it actually affects your organic ranking as well. So that's, just, that's a real difference with Google. And okay, and how do you, the second part to that was how do you then keep up to date with it? Because like Google every month, it seems they've got some tweak or adjustment to the algorithm. Is that the same in Amazon or actually is it pretty consistent? I am a real cynic and about, about keeping up to date with things too regularly. Because I think if you do the basics really well, that's already going to take you up a lot of time. And who actually knows? And I don't know anything about Google, so you can just hold me up there. And I know Mark Williams Cook knows a, knows a lot about that. Who really knows? And how much content is produced out speculating? So certainly there are some great Amazon companies that put out an awesome amount of content. Celix, which is a major Amazon software tool. They're a German company. I read a lot of their content. It's really good. You can find content everywhere, but for every company that I have ever worked with, there's normally something in the top 10 basics of what they should be doing that they're not doing well enough. So really, um, I think we have to take, you know, angsting about the algorithm with a pinch of salt and a bit of caution because mm -hmm. there's normally a lot of easier things you can get, uh, get better before we go worrying about what's the latest hack that you need to do to get around yeah, the algorithm. That's a really good shout rather than, uh, yeah, try to find the next bounce of the ball. How about we just get the foundations right and then we can start looking at... How about we have a ball already, right? And then, then, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll worry about how it bounces. Yeah, good shout. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's a lot of... I guess, I guess it's like most of these sorts of forums that, you know, there's a lot of people on the internet that are discussing and shouting back and forth and so often the one who shouts the loudest, that's the one that's, you know, the, the, the advice that people take. And it, I guess it can get quite overwhelming with a lot of these algorithm updates and, and little tweaks and changes and people discussing it. Is, is, that, is that your opinion or? I'm, I try and keep things simple and yeah. I respect the people that really, really want to dig into it. You know, I've been to Amazon conferences where there are some really great experts talking about the advertising hacks they found when they started running bids between two and four in the morning. And, <laughs> you know, that's great. If that's your bag and you love jumping into that detail, that's... Yeah. That's certainly a place where there's, there, there's space in the market to people be an expert. What really gets me up in the, ma in the morning is making Amazon work for your business. Yeah. So the thing that I really care about is lines of responsibility, the CEO taking responsibility for Amazon, reporting uh, junior people having KPIs that they can, they can work to on Amazon. For me, that's what's interesting. But yeah, Amazon, Amazon hacks and the latest friends is, is, is the thing that some people love. So, you know, mm -hmm. go find those people and listen to their podcasts. I mean, is, is, it like, is it like SEO? You know, I mean, so many people are saying there's an SEO hack here and, it, and we all know that it takes time. Is, is Amazon the same sort of, sort of thing as, as working with SEO? I think that's a great analogy, yes. So the, I would say the real difference between um, Amazon and Google is that you've both got to, got to get people 
to your product page and then they have to buy. So I feel like when it's in your website, Google is going to tell you all about whether people did buy, but it's not really Google's responsibility and they don't really care whether people actually bought. You're going to know on your website whether people did, but it's not really necessarily going to affect your ranking. Would that be fair um, summary of how that works on Google? Yeah. Whereas on Amazon, um, Amazon really cares if people bought. So you have a lot more, um, it's kind of really end to end on, on Amazon. And yeah, there's a lot of things to tweak, but that that's really the fundamental difference. I think looking at, I don't know, I'm looking outside today, it's super sunny, and I'm thinking actually one of the opportunities with Amazon seems to be the kind of inter the international option. It, like, again, if you're looking at Shopify or WordPress or something like that, you can go multilingual and everything else, um, and there's various tools that allow you to do that. I guess that's possible on Amazon as well, and if so, how do you go about that? That's, that's great. So, of course... Uh, the, the problem with it, if you have your own website and you want to get it translated into French, sure, you can, you can there's a Google app, um, Google Translate plugins, right? But they can just translate that for you. You can get it done bespoke. How are you then going to drive French people to your website? That's a headache in itself. Mm -hmm. You can pretty easy um, click on a button in Seller Central and then get your stuff put immediately on. If you're in the UK, uh, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, just like that. So it's very, very simple, but that's also a trap because you need to make sure that you're selling in those com com uh, countries profitably. So more than anything else, you've got to think about things like returns and things like, you know, how much does it cost to ship out there? And one of the examples that, that just blew my mind, I, um, I called call the CEO earlier this year and that company was selling exercise bikes and kettlebells and they had just decided to sell in Europe without figuring out how much it would cost them if they had somebody that returned an exercise bike and how much it would cost them to get that exercise bike back to the UK. And it turned out that for one exercise bike returned, it wiped out the profit on about you know 10 exercise bikes sold. And that's because they just didn't do the calculation of how much would it cost them to sell in Europe. And it's easy right. for me to say, I'm not trying to sell kettlebells. I'm sure that's a challenge, right? Look at the profit, put it on the European marketplaces, do a Google Translate job, like don't overthink it. You can test the marketplace like that, see how it works. If you want to sell more, you probably need somebody that speaks that language and understands Amazon. Full disclosure, that's what my business does. But you can sell in you can sell in your really, really quickly. And that's the Amazon low barrier to entry. You just click a button, you can get it done. I was just teasing you there. I was like, surely she's gonna plug herself in a minute. Like any <laughs> moment now. Surely. And then bang, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you didn't have to fish for that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really interested actually around fulfillment actually. So let's say I want to sell product in Spain as an example. Is there kind of Amazon depots where I can take product to and it sits there and then if someone buys in Spain it just ships from there or do every time I have to fulfill from here in the UK because that's ridiculous. There are loads of options and that's a whole other area of expertise is, is fulfillment and inventory. Sure. Basically Amazon is not just a website, Amazon is also a logistics company, right? So mm -hmm. what is Amazon Prime? Amazon's making sure that stuff gets to you really, really quickly. As a consumer that's all we care about. We, we click, we buy, we get it really immediately. As a seller, we have a bunch of options. We can box things up in our bedroom and put it in jiffy bags and send it to the post office. We can get couriers delivered. We can give everything to Amazon and pay Amazon to store it in a warehouse and Amazon fulfills it. And we can get third party logistics companies to do that for us. So there's a bunch of different options. If you are really um, on point, you can also do what they call seller fulfilled prime, which means you ship it out, but you also get the Amazon label. So there, there's a bunch of different options. Everything has its own price point, but the, a lot of people go for Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, which means you box up all your stuff, you put a bunch of barcodes on it, you send it to the Amazon warehouse, you pay for storage, Amazon sits it out, you stay at home smoking cigars. Sign me up. Sounds easy. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do we sign? <laughs> I guess I'm guessing that option though is is like you said a different price point. So I'm guessing that option is the, the easiest and probably the most effective, but probably cost the most. I think it depends what you're selling because yeah. any logistics person will start immediately asking size, weight, country, dimensions. You know, mm. do you need gift wrapping? Like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But I know when when COVID hit. Um, Amazon was only prioritizing certain categories and not others. So people yeah. that I, my own clients that were, for example, doing beauty, Amazon wasn't fulfilling it very well for the first three weeks. I had a bunch of clients go to other warehouses to check. 
And many of them said that the third party logistic warehouses were great, but not as cheap as Amazon because Amazon's got scale. There's no, there's no beating it. Right. So for a lot of people, Amazon will, um, will be very competitive, if not cheaper, but it does depend if you're selling kettlebells or, you know, <laughs> exercise bikes, may, that, that may not be the case. Yeah. G- gym equipment was a nightmare to, to get hold of when, when COVID first hit. Everyone else was buying it. Like right? gold, isn't it? <laughs> One thing I want to just ask is around Amazon advertising. So we talked a little bit about the organic side of Amazon listings, but I believe they have a pay-per-click model similar to that of Google ads. Is it pay-per-click or how does it work? Like, tell us a bit more about the advertising side of Amazon. So I guess um, as an Amazon consultant with, um, you know, <laughs> it's similar to Google ads in the same way that um, it has a bidding model. But with the, the key thing that, I, that is different is that the ads have got to make the purchase, right? It's not just good enough to get people to the page. And um, Amazon ads, you have bids, you have keywords, you have types of different ads on different areas of the page, similar to Google ads. But the ads also have to, um, have to convert and you have metrics, which is basically the percentage of the retail price that you're selling your products is called the ACOS or average cost of sale. So there's, and I'm going to, full disclosure, I have got companies um, that I work with that have Google ad agencies that are also running their Amazon ads. And those agencies have not done any work at all looking at the Amazon marketing. And that's like some agency doing your, your Google ads, never having a conversation with you about your website and never looking into your Google analytics to see how that website is performing. It's insane. Like the two have to run together. So if you do have an agency running your ads, they should be having a conversation with you about your, your Amazon analytics before just throwing your money. Great shout. I think it's really interesting to see where Amazon has come over the last few years and how quickly it's able to adapt. And I was actually looking at something on Facebook this morning and I see that Facebook have announced a new advertising platform, uh, yeah, trying to compete, I guess. Where do you think Amazon's going to go in the next, in the next one, two, three, five years? That is such a great pers- question that I'm completely unqualified to answer. <laughs> <laughs> we all, have, all I know is that we all love Amazon. They're the biggest company in the world, and uh, online is a bigger opportunity because um, there's there's going to be fewer people in stores at least through the end of this year. I think that um, Amazon. Uh, I know some sellers um, are worried about going on Amazon because they say Amazon just develops its own range of our products like Amazon basics. We can all buy an Amazon basics iPhone charger um, instead of going to another company. So yeah, they do do that with some categories. If your stuff has a real USP, I wouldn't really worry about Amazon um, cannibalizing your stuff and trying to copy what you're making, right? If you're selling something generic with no story, that might be an issue. So Amazon is just going to get bigger and um, I'm not so say but that's what, we're going to we're going to build on that point. I'm not letting you get away. With that. Okay, so Jeff Bezos has stepped aside, right? He's decided he doesn't want to do it anymore, and he said, "You know what? I've heard this lady Eloise Finn. She's going to run the show." What <laughs> would you change about Amazon that really frustrates you? That you think it's my company now. This is what we're doing. Well, Amazon has made a lot of money um, over the years, and there are loads of graphs and data and great, you know, podcasts to show it. Amazon makes more money from its sellers i.e. people selling on the platform than it does from the end consumer. So we all know if you buy something from Amazon, you'll see in the little buy box sold by Amazon or you'll see sold by Quickfire Digital or sell beyond or Trendy Grandad, right? So it seems inevitable that they will be pushing more and more companies to sell online. They have a lot of programs to encourage people to sell internationally because that actually sell it the sellers on amazon who they take you know amazon takes a 15 percent cut of your sales if you're selling on amazon are being encouraged massively i had a call with amazon uh, a representative from the seller team in amazon uh, seattle just this week actually who they were telling me they're trying to get people in the states to sell more in europe and they need people like me to advise or help with um, what it takes to sell in europe mm. because amazon is pushing its own sellers these companies to sell more, to expand to Japan, to expand to Singapore, to expand to Australia, get on Amazon Mexico. So I think we'll likely see more Amazon countries opening up and more Amazon categories opening up, different things you can sell online because they're not going anywhere except up at the moment. And do you think they'll ever go a branch into services or will it always be products? Hey, I mean, Amazon Web Services, that's your, more your area than well, mine, right? It is, it's a start, right? But yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they become a marketplace for everything 
or if they just stay in their swim lane. I mean, what did it, well, I mean, if we look at like great examples of the 1990s or the early 2000s, I mean, Microsoft only stopped dominating things on, on, on computers when, I don't know, the Monopolies Commission and the European Union told them to stop bundling their web browsers with their computers, right? So somebody's going to have to stop Amazon doing that for anything to happen, I should think. I'm just looking at Stokely's face and both of us look at each other going, neither of us were probably born. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think you'll find that's probably about 2008. So I think well, I really we were. Yeah. We were here. Come on, come on, guys. <laughs> you saw that on news round. <laughs> Did you say Amazon takes 50% of your revenue? No, one five, one five. So depending on how you're selling and whether you're getting them to do the warehousing, they will take one five, 15%, 15, 20% of your retail price as a commission. Mm. If you want to add promotions, like Black Friday deals, there's a pay to play. If you want to add vouchers, like Fiat 5% off, 10% off, you pay for that. If mm. you want to um, if you want to do anything, if you want to advertise, you also have to think of that. So a streak from the hip, if you want to sell on Amazon, is you have to think 20% is going to go to Amazon and another 20% is going to go on advertising. And that's why many companies make things more expensive on their Amazon site than they do on their website to mm -hmm. make up the difference. Uh, that makes yeah. sense. But the world is shopping on there, so why wouldn't you go for your opportunity? People, right? still, people still don't care, right? They still would just rather buy on Amazon than they would go to the thing because it's convenient. Mm. I have, uh, you may have heard this story, Nathan, but a lot of people won't, is that um, I went into a premium beauty brand in, in London. We had a board meeting because I came in to help, help them develop on Amazon. And the CEO uh, said to me, well, I think we're pr too premium for, for Amazon. Um, we don't even sell in Sainsbury's. Like, I don't think Amazon's very good for our brand. And I, and I looked at everyone and said, right, hands up who doesn't shop on Amazon in this room. And, and no, no one put their hands up. Like, <laughs> they were all shopping on Amazon, yet they thought they were too premium to sell on it. And I'm like, come on, guys. Like, this is the proof is in the pudding. Everyone's on here. So um, that, that's the opportunity. So people are, in, my, in my area of the world, when people ask who about Amazon, people tend to angst. It's difficult to use. The analytics are weird. Um, it's confusing. Amazon will take over my products and I can't sell it at the price I want. And I would say all of those are not reasons for not selling on Amazon because if you do it right, you can certainly make a profit. Mm. So basically to Jeff Bezos when he's listening, uh, that's the five things you want to change about it, right? <laughs> nice, I'll, nice. I'll make sure I drop him a note after this and just let him know. Hey, I'm, I'm not. A podcast, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's Jeff, on the podcast I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, what you're trying to say is that there's, there's, it seems to me that there is many frustrations but there's not many ways around them I mean you are once you sell it on Amazon they have you in your hands like that whatever they say goes yeah that's certainly true so it's a pain and it's somewhat difficult uh, I don't believe from companies that I know and I work with lots of different types of companies that are successful on Amazon that's not a reason to discount the business opportunity. If you can see that you can sell something that no one else is selling at a profit, <clears throat> you can easily get to market on Amazon. Yeah, it's gonna suck, but it, it you know, when, when I, when sometimes I speak to companies, I'm like, you know, how hard was it you, for you to get listed in, I don't know, Harvey Nichols or Waitrose? Like that was hard for you back yeah. then. Now you know how to do it. You, you forgot how difficult it was. And um, mm. it's just that type of thing. There are lots of ho hurdles to get over that if you're used to selling in supermarkets or you're used to selling on your own WordPress, you forgot how difficult it was. There's, there's hurdles in any channel. And I just, um, in Amazon's defense, it doesn't matter if you're selling on Amazon, you're selling in store, you're selling through WordPress, Shopify, Magento, whatever, you're going to have hurdles. And it's just about sometimes you have to play within the parameters that the game is kind of laid out. And Amazon's no different, which I guess takes us interestingly onto questions around the product listings. Like if you had the perfect product listing, what would that look like? I think that would be the same if we had the perfect product listing on WordPress, if we had an amazing piece of video marketing, it would trigger emotions and make people want to buy. Like, is that, am I getting away from that question by saying that? Oh, no, so no, no, good, right. good content, social proof, uh, rich media, all those good things. Hey, you want to have, you want to have good word. I think that the real ABC of a good um, product listing on Amazon, great price, great hero image, is right for Amazon, might not be the same one as you have on the website and probably shouldn't be. The right words in the title, good reviews. After that, there's loads and loads of levers you can pull in terms of words, back end keywords, A plus content, 
um, cross promotions, subscribe and save, offers, lots of other things, having the right range. But fundamentally, um, having people buy it is, is going to be based on the title, the price and the, and the, and the photo, because that's what make, makes people click on the entire product listing. Can you just tell me a little bit more about subscribe and save? Is, uh, is there kind of a, script, a subscription engine within Amazon that essentially you can press the right buttons and dials and it allows you to suddenly turn your one-off products into subscription going forwards? Well, in fact, of course, there's always a catch, right? You have to be a certain type of seller selling wholesale to Amazon to benefit from the subscribe and save. So if you guys are buying subscribe and save coffee, that normally means that a company is selling to Amazon rather selling direct to consumer. But that is one way you can um, get offers um, for your consumers. There are other ways to do it by taking disc putting discounts on by six, get 10% off. So you can run that another way if you're a seller, but subscribe and save, save is for vendors. That's those who have a wholesale relationship with Amazon. But yeah. Okay. So looking at Amazon as a platform, what is the best thing that Amazon allows you to do as opposed to WordPress? Just like you understand our world a little bit better now from the, the series we've been doing recently. What would you say is the one thing that st makes Amazon stand out from the crowd? Everybody loves shopping on Amazon. That is something you can't get away from. Um, that's the thing, right? The audience is kind of there for you. It's not like you've got to build a store and then drive the traffic. You've already got the traffic. You've just got to build the right pages. You've got, you've got the traffic. You've got to stand out from the crowd because it has Amazon has endless shelf space, but it also has endless shelf space for your competitors. And mm -hmm. I think that people underestimate how much um, the fact that Amazon, I mean, from, from what I can see, Amazon led the way in terms of seamless customer or e-commerce experience. It's so easy to buy stuff on that platform. It's, it's a massive opportunity. And I think that for, for companies that I talk with that are wondering about whether to grow their, their digital strategy, a lot of them have turned around in the last like eight weeks since, uh, since COVID broke out because they realized that it's an easy to, it's an easy platform to start on. It's very low barrier to entry. You can set up a store and you can close the store very quickly. Everybody loves shopping on there and you can easily add different products. And there's such a, it's such a limited template. Like you don't have to worry too much about a lot of the things that Nathan, you, you have to worry about with the websites you design because Amazon's already taken care of it. So um, it's easy for me to say as an Amazon marketing agency, right? But the fundamental thing is if it's profitable, you should go, you should go try it. Let's talk a little bit more about Sell Beyond as an agency. So we get Amazon. If anyone's been listening for the last half hour or so, we'll know that there's, not, there's not many people that will know more about Amazon than yourself. So tell me a bit more about Sell Beyond in terms of uh, the kind of translation bit you said earlier. Does that form part of Sell Beyond or is there two companies? Like, how does that work? And typically, what is if someone's listening today and they're like, oh, am I right for Sell Beyond or am I not? What's the kind of ideal client that you're looking to attract? So there are lots of Amazon consulting agencies out there and you know, that's the great place thing about capitalism is there's room for everybody. So we, we go across three areas. There's Amazon consulting, we're just a one trick pony. That's what we do. We work on Amazon. There are translation agencies and there are digital marketing agencies. So we combine all three. We work on Amazon. We use best practice from digital marketing in terms of analytics, reporting, test and measure. And we also work in foreign languages. Now translation agencies, tend to throw words at you and then run away. They're not really interested in conversion and they won't necessarily redo the job. That's not our bag. We do foreign language marketing just for Amazon, conversion focused. And digital marketing agencies, they know a lot about many platforms, typically not about Amazon. And um, I had a conversation with, with someone recently that made me realize, why, do, why, do I, why did I find Sell Beyond and why do I work on Amazon? It's because I sold stuff on Amazon back in the day, probably when you two, um, you know, was still in, in, in shorts and nappies. Um, <laughs> therefore, I've done it as a okay. seller and most <laughs> marketing agencies haven't done that. Sorry, I can feel uh, some pushback coming there. No, no, I just said that was last week for Stokely. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's interesting. So you were selling, uh, was it books you were selling or what was the first product that you kind of took? When about? I was in the States, um, I was selling academic books. So I did a PhD. You have to read a ton of books every week. So did my classmates. I sold their books on Amazon. I had about a thousand books in my living room. used to put them in jiffy bags, take them to US mail post office and take a cut of the profits from, from my friends for doing that. Really, really simple. Um, but it, it gave me an insight into Amazon. And then 
I have now realized that most Amazon consulting marketing agencies, the founder has normally done that. The founder has normally started off selling and then decided to do advisory. There aren't that many marketing agencies of all the different types that are running Amazon because typically the people inside haven't really sold on it. That seems to me the difference. Hmm. I'm guessing that's where, you know, that's where you get all your knowledge from though, isn't it? Your, your it definitely started. It definitely, I mean, the pain, the pain of setting it up, even if you're selling books, which is a whole lot easier than selling products. Um, I've been there. I, 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 you know, I've had bags on my, bags on my back full of, uh, full of boxes and cartons and tried to figure out what were the most profitable books. Did they have to be this dimension or this weight, what have you? So it was a small time like side hustle, but it definitely gave me a start. They always say you learn more in the trenches and I guess that that's no different, right? <laughs> Essentially you're a, yeah, you're in the thick of it and you're realizing actually you, it's nice because then when you're working with clients, you can kind of understand their pain points and frustrations and being able to relate to it to say, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're going through because I had that exact same experience. I would, I would like to say so. I, I feel like earning, uh, you know, under $10,000 as, as a bookseller might, might be a bit of an overstatement to where when a company selling over, you know, tens of millions. But I'm going to say I, I felt that pain. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hey, you're in there. You're in there with the rest. It doesn't matter. So, Eloise, I'm conscious of time. Uh, it's been really amazing to have you on. And and personally, I was, I was just really interested to find out more about what you do. Like, I'm lucky that I spend a lot of time with you, so I, I kind of learn this stuff. But so many people in our network won't have heard that. And there's a massive untapped opportunity, which I want people to start making the most of. So hopefully they can kind of connect with you. I mean, what's, how would people get in touch, people listening to this? What's I'm on LinkedIn, at Eloise Finch, or you can find us at Sell Beyond. We also have a Sell Beyond YouTube channel, which uh, the podcast cool. you and I are doing making is part of. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So if people connect with you on LinkedIn, uh, kind of can drop your message, questions, whatever. And then in terms of the process, is that a, um, yeah, is it cool with you? Like, how, how does it work? How do people get started if they want to engage with Sell Beyond? Sure. So there are loads of, and this goes back to your other question, there are loads of different things you can sell on Amazon, loads of different ways of selling. I specialize in a certain area. So you can go sell Cocoa Pops, North Face jackets on Amazon. Um, you can do drop shipping with Amazon. Um, that's not really my area. So I could always point you in the direction of people who advise on that. Um, you can, my specialist area is, is companies that are selling normally into bricks and mortar stores uh, and want to grow mm. on Amazon. Mm. Um, but I'll have, you know, I'll always point you in the right direction. There are tons and tons of Facebook groups and podcasts and seller communities that if it's not my, my specialist bag, I can say, go talk to those guys because they'll know a lot more than I do. So always happy to point people in the right direction. That's great. Um, if you, so just, just one, one final question for me, Heloise, if you, um, you know, say I'm, I'm a new business and I'm selling uh, AirPod cases. What's the one tip that you'd give to anyone that wants to or is, starts, is thinking about selling on Amazon? Um, try and do a good job if you're <laughs> because a lot of people start, start selling on Amazon and also try selling on eBay and also try selling on their website and maybe also running Facebook ads and also trying to sell through Instagram. You're yeah. never going to be able to fight all of those fires at once. And then um oftentimes people come to, come to me and said amazon didn't really work out for me and i look at what they set up and i was like yeah you probably could spend more time doing that so i would say choose your battles if you want to make a go of amazon there's opportunity there but it's got to look good because all your competitors are there too if if you're not sure like how many things can you do in a day and is amazon going to be the, one of the top three i'd say so there's lots of opportunity but try and do it well because it's pretty competitive out there yeah, it's a great tip. If you're going to do something, sometimes do it properly or don't do it at all. Don't, don't do it mm -hmm. half half. Eloise, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. I hope you all enjoyed the listening. I encourage you all to connect with Eloise, find out more about what she's up to, see how she can help you in your business grow. But thank you so much, having, much. Uh, for joining us and I look forward to seeing you all on another show. Thanks again. Cheers, thanks. Thanks, Eloise.